let's talk about video marketing because I think that this is a very important thing for all of us to not only be able to do, but understand how to use it with WordPress. Now here's the textbook definition. Video marketing is the use of video content to promote a brand or product. This can take many forms from short videos, promoting a product or service to longer long form videos, documentaries about a company or its products. Video marketing can be used to drive traffic to a website or social media pages, I should pages, as well as to create engagement with customers and potential, should be with customers and potential customers, yes. So in a nutshell, video marketing is really used to help create more conversions, more opportunities, more of what it's going to take to get to your business goals, to reach your business goals, using one of the biggest forms of content that is, can be repurposed in so many ways that other content can't, because you can literally break down a video and turn it into, well, you can have it just be the video, you can have it be audio, and then you can also have it be the text, AKA the script. So there is no form of content that you can break down to multiple forms the way you can with video. And we just love video because it's motion pictures. So for those who have answered the poll, as far as the experience with WordPress, we do have a lot of beginners and people who are moderately skilled, not many WordPress developers here or advanced users. And I wanted to ask this question because there's times where we do these sessions and we have more advanced users or senior developers. I just want to get a, gr a grasp on that. So here are the, the phases, or what I call the phases of video marketing, right? So this is kind of my interpretation of it. You have your strategy phase, and then you have your execution phase. And with the strategy phase, you have your purpose, your goals, your target market, KPIs, and video production more importantly, the pre-production. With the execution phase of video marketing, you have video production again, but more the editing, post-production and production itself, video marketing, email marketing, SEO, automation. I'm going to show you some cool things with custom post types that I think you're going to wow your socks off. And then we're going to hit into a little bit of analytics. So that's why I said this could technically be a two-part series, depending on how much I get done with this, because I really wanted to jam pack it with some value, but I wanted to make it clear and make it make sense by demonstrating what I'm showing you. Okay, let me end this. And I'm trying to do a few things at one time, y'all. That's all. All right. So purpose, let's talk about our purpose. And let me wet my beak here as Mr. Wonderful would say, Kevin on Shark Tank. I need to wet my beak. So purpose, right? Let's talk about purpose. Why are we gonna talk about purpose? Well, before we can really get into video marketing, we need to understand what is our purpose of doing the marketing at all, right? and or creating the video more specifically, but using the video to, to, to use it for a marketing tool. So think about what your purpose is when it comes to creating the video. Typically there are three buckets that we can place purpose in. Now these, this is not a hard rule, but there are three buckets that you wanna think about when you are thinking about the purpose of your video or the purpose of your company, your mission, your business in general, right? The first one is educate or education. So this is a bucket when it comes to creating video, creating video content, video marketing, and you're using video to share a message, right? Education is a huge one. So are you a a spiritual healing teacher or coach looking to, you know, educate people on how to use holistic practices, you know, in order to heal themselves? Are you a school teacher, you know, using Zoom? There was a big case during, you know, the pandemic 
right? Where there are a lot of Zoom-based classroom sessions and you were a teacher doing that. You were using video, especially, you know, if there was a replay involved for the, for the, for the kids who didn't see it. So, you know, how are you using video to educate people on what they need to know? And sometimes it could be specifically about your product or service. Sometimes the video itself, you know, could be the edu- could be the product, product or service. You're educating people and your video is the product or service. You're not just educating them about your product or service. So just let me know real quick in the chat if, if that makes sense as far as the education standpoint is concerned. The next one is inspire. So, and this is not, again, a hard rule of thumb to say it's got to be one way or the other. This is just typically the buckets that creating a video, when you have a purpose of a video, these are the three buckets you want to think about. Popular, very, very known buckets you want to think about when you are, or categories when you're thinking about your video. So do you want to inspire you know, are you looking to make people feel like they can be motivated? You know, one of my favorite inspirational, motivational leaders is a guy by the name of E.T., his hip hop preacher, Eric Thomas. That man is one of the biggest motivational speakers in the world that will wake you up if you were, you know, sleeping because you just took some NyQuil or Tylenol PM. He used to do the, the, uh, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy ET. He did that every Monday for, I mean, I don't know how many years straight, six, seven, eight years straight before he became the number one motivational speaker in the world. Uh, and I have no relation to him and this is, you know, I have no affiliation to him at all, but I've seen his growth over the years and just seeing him being married, having kids, you know, used to being eaten out of trash cans, living in abandoned buildings. There's a lot of parts about his story that I can relate to. And so he inspires the heck out of me when it comes to, you know, creating my content. So that's just an example. Who is your inspirational motivation, you know, influencer and somebody that you can kind of mimic or model to create your videos after? And people love this because it makes them feel better. And then when people feel better, they spin cheddar. You feel me? Now, the last bucket is entertain. And this is one that I know we all, <laughs> you know, we all get we all get caught up with, right? We all get caught up with them TikTok videos. Right. So with those TikTok videos that we get stuck on, you know, we're being entertained. And that entertainment is pushing us over to wherever it is that that person that company, that brand, they want to direct us to. So think about for yourself, you know, are you a, and entertainment is not a bad category of bucket. I'm just picking on TikTok real quick. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, just picking on TikTok. That's how I feel. Yes. That's how I feel. The prodigal son hath returned. No, TikTok is just that. I think they're doing something new. But either way, entertainment, when it comes to creating your podcast, when it comes to creating your, you know, comedy or versus type of show, entertainment when, again, like this is doing a DJ set, you can be using music for entertainment. You can be playing video games. Video games is a huge, oh my goodness, Twitch, the video game market huge when it comes to video right now it's 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 hot it's in it's not going nowhere so for those of y'all who got kids that's yelling at your kids talk about you know you shouldn't be playing these video games because it's wasting your time look them kids i'm trying to tell you right now them kids one time one day them kids can make you a lot of money with them twitch videos just being real with y'all so Real quick while we're here, I'm curious, when it comes to creating video, what is your main purpose for creating your video? Is it to inspire, to educate, to entertain? Just really, really quick. 
get this pro work on. Okay, we got education winning so far, huh? So most people here are, okay. So most of y'all are looking to educate with your videos. We have advocacy groups, generally education, yeah. Yeah, education is is huge right now. I'm Listen, <laughs> we're doing education right now, are we not? I'm just trying to add a little bit of entertainment factor into it. So that's why you hear me playing with these sound effects and clips. And this is just practice for me because I'm just gonna have fun. The better I can get with it during these times, better I can get you know with it during like the, the big kahuna times, you know? So that's why I'm like, I'm gonna just practice while I have my, my people in the building. And we are gonna get to video for SEO. So don't worry, don't worry, hold, hold on to that thought. We are gonna get to that one. We're gonna get to that one. So let's, let's keep going, let's, let's keep going on. You know, Marvin Gaye said, what's going on? I'm gonna say, keep going on, keep going on, keep going on, keep going on. All right, so let's get to goals. Because goals, other than understanding the bucket and the category of your video, the purpose, your goals are really the driving factor of what the, what the video is gonna be. So, this is something that I think a lot of us really, really don't understand. And I see so many people create videos without the thought process of how does this relate to my overall business goals, right? So I just wanted to touch on this in this video marketing you know, topic, because I, I really want people to understand that it's the goals that is the driving force. It's the reason behind your video. If your video is not helping you reach your goals, your video is just a video. It's not a marketing asset. It's not a tool. It's just a video. So an example of one goal now, this is something that not all of us are going to relate to, but I think most of us can, but it would be something that is transactional, right? So that's why you see me have the money here, because I just want this to showcase something that we're exchanging some type of money. There's cash coming in from the video or uh, from a, some type of video that's leading to the assistance of a transaction. That could be a goal for your business. This is not gonna go deep into like what goals are, but typically we want goals to be SMART. That's the acronym for a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant time bound or time frame. But yeah, you definitely want your video to lead to some type of transactional or something that's transactional. Another goal type could be reach. So a lot of times us as business owners, consultants, freelance, freelancers, sole proprietors, entrepreneurs, we want to grow our business in a way where we're serving more markets. So your video could be something that really helps grow your business in more locations, more markets. That is a huge goal for a lot of businesses. We want to grow into XYZ markets or into these new territories by quarter one or quarter four of 2023. That is a realistic goal right there. And this video is going to help create that, the success of that goal. So that's something that's huge. And then the, another example, or the last example I'm giving in this demonstration of goal types, one could be to increase staffing, right? or to have something to do with employee satisfaction or employee operational procedures, you know, something to do with your internal health. You know, you wanna have a goal to, to have four people 
be on, you know, on board for new staff members or employees or contractors by X, Y, Z amount of time, or you want to have X amount of X, Y, Z type of employee contractors. Maybe you want to expand your company into a more, of a more diverse and inclusive practice. So you want to have these type of people or this demographic that can be, that's a goal for companies. So it depends on where your business is at, what type of business you have, but these are some general ones that people typically use as ways to create a goal for their business and then use that goal as the goal for their video. Like how is their video going to help them reach that goal? And speaking of a goal, it's always my goal to make sure I, I try to read and catch, keep up with everything. But yes, it is what's going on. I, I, I didn't mean to mess that up. So thank you, Nicole, for that. All right. So target market is, is it's interesting. I get this question a lot, specifically when speaking of, you know, marketing, market research, branding. I, I hear a lot of people talk about target market. So for the most part, Again, this is textbook definition and I'm going to break it down because that's what we here for. We got to break it down, right? Target market is a group of people to whom a company, business, or sole proprietor aims its products or services. A company usually has several target markets, each with different needs that the company tries to meet. So target market is one of like the secret sauces. If you can think of one of your Best favorite dishes, like, okay, we just had Thanksgiving, y'all, right? I'm curious for those of y'all who, who do or don't celebrate, it doesn't matter. Was there a certain dish, one of your favorite dishes that you ate on Thanksgiving? Please put it in the chat. Or a favorite dish that you like to cook in general. All right, everybody. Put, put, put they dish up once now. We got cranberry, we got mac and cheese, we got pumpkin pie, Brussels sprouts. Oh, oh, y'all are saying some good ones though. Now, cranberry and orange or orange relish. That's Sally, that's an interesting one. Audrey, mac and cheese. Okay, 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 okay. A dressing. Yeah, Nicole. I know. Brussels sprouts. Uh huh. Yeah. So all the ones are great from Brussels sprouts, dressing, because I love dressing. Because Brussels sprouts were twice, right? Pumpkin pie. Now that's like pumpkin pie. I don't have that often. I usually have sweet potato pie. You know, that, that, now that could be a black thing. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. But I usually have sweet potato pie. But I do like pumpkin pie. Mac and cheese, it's got to be good mac and cheese. It's got to be some of the best mac and cheese. It's got to be because, you know, everybody don't know how to make the same mac and cheese. But either way, I just wanted to let you all know that every single dish that y'all put in there, we talk, we talking about the secret sauce. What made that good? You know, and, and this is what the target market is all about. If you know your target market, I promise you, you will say you this. It's just you will spend less money. You will make more money. You will have less headaches. <laughs> you'll have less refunds. You'll have there's just so many pros to understanding who your target market is, because once you do, you take it off. You can sell. I mean, water to a well. You, I'm, I'm talking about you can sell a poop to a bull. I just made that one up off the top of my head. I don't, I don't, I don't know if that one. Was. Either way, the point is, is that you can sell anything to anyone if you understand how they work, who they are, and why they need or want your product or service. So demographics, this is one of the first buckets, categories, segments of target market or understanding a target market. And it's one that I think most people already have an idea of, but something that I just wanted to quickly touch over. We'll 
I'll show you a little bit more. I'm not going to show you how to do market research or target market, but I am going to show you a quick tool. It's a gem. And I don't think many people talk about this. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy they don't because it feels good to be able to present this to y'all. And I, I think 80% of y'all don't even know about this, but we'll see. We'll, we'll test that theory. So ethnicity, age, gender, yearly income, marital status. I used to say martial status all the time. I'm just keeping it real. Like it took a while for people to correct me. Like it's not martial status. It's a marital status. Kids, occupation, and financials. So those are just some characteristics, right? Some elements of demographics, right? How you would research and look for your people, the best people that would buy your product, use your service, associate with them, join your organization, join your community, whatever it is that you do, these are demographics. This is a category, and these are characteristics within that category of how you would separate people, right? And it's that's what demographics is. The next one is a geographics. So geographics is talking about the location more specifically. And we're talking about country, region, state. Sometimes we can even get into ordinance, I believe. What else is what else is there? If you if you can think of any other way we can categorize geographics, put it put it in the chat. Because I ain't perfect and this is a team effort. So we're gonna build this presentation as we go. It's like one of the movies or video games where like you kind of with a, a watershed. I'm trying to urban, suburban, rural. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Those are good. Those are good ways to think about. You. Thank you, Audrey. Appreciate that. Any, anything else? Anybody got anything else? County zip code. Okay. Uh, look at y'all coming with the. Uh, look, at that. look at that. The team is here. All right. Okay. All right. So yeah, we got more zip code, county. We got these are other ways that we could. We could add, add geographics, right? The location of our particular desired, not perfect, but desired, preferred, you know, best, best person for the, the opportunity, right? This is that best person. That where do they live and where area are they? Now, this is one that I feel a lot of people overlook when they think about target market. And there's a reason why Google Analytics and Motomo, ah, Sally, ah, uh-huh, I ain't forget. But analytics platforms give you this data to tell you the kind of people that are looking, you know, at your website, you know, at your content and what devices, what technologies they're using. Man, this is one that so many people overlook. And this is important, especially for video, because they're, they're not looking at your video in a physical book. You know, they're not looking at your video in the sky. They're, you know, they're not looking at your video in, you know, places that are not on a device. So it's important for you to understand the technology and devices, because that's where the video is going to be shown. Hey, if, if they looking at your video in the theater, you done made it. Like we gotta, we gotta give you, we gotta give you some. You know what I'm saying? If, you look, if your video is in the theater, hey, you done made it, and you need to move out the hood and go to the suburb. Okay, but yeah, technology and devices are definitely something that a lot of people overlook because. We don't think of our consumers, our viewers, our audience, our target market, like how they're viewing our content. We're not typically thinking about the device they're using. You know, we're thinking about everything else. It's like, well, everybody's got different devices. Some people are on their iPads, some people are on their phones, some people are hey, in the theater. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people are where they're at. So you just got to think about it that way. Devices, right? Browser. The computer system, the desktop browser, mobile browser, 
the mobile operating system and even the cell phone carrier. Yeah, you know how many people are doing deals with cell phone carriers? It's about T-Mobile, Verizon, Sprint. These are the secrets that they don't talk about. I want to tell y'all. Cricket, heck, I'm on. What am I on? Let me see. Look, I'm about to tell y'all my business. Metro, you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm on the subsidiary of T-Mobile. I ain't even on T-Mobile, y'all. You know, them bills ain't no, ain't ain't no joke. For real. Look, what, what how she said? Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for them. But look, that you got to do what you got to do. And cell phone carriers are ways to be able to increase your reach, especially if you have a really good video. And then here's some ones that are continued. We got social networks. We got platform apps. We got how people are consuming, right? Buying, spending, influencers, representation, genres, movies, podcasts, views, values, problems, goals, and motivators. So this is just other ways of finding your target market. So next we have KPIs. So KPIs are key performance indicators. These are measurable values that indicate how well a company is performing against its goals. KPIs can be used to track progress over time and identify and to identify areas where improvements need to be made. So pretty much what KPIs are, are ways of showing, are you reaching your goals or are you not reaching your goals? And they are typically numbers. You know, they're metrics, they're, they're shown in numbers. And I'm going to show you some of the most popular KPIs that you want to take note of and think about when it comes to seeing if you are actually reaching your goals or are you failing to reach your goals and you need to make improvements. It's okay to fail. But the thing about failing is, is that we need to understand we have to fail in, in order to achieve. Okay, so the first one is time. This is a big KPI for here. And, and, and this is specifically for video. Some of these can apply to other applications, like other situations. But right now we talk about specifically video. What are the things you need to be looking at when it comes to your analytics? You need to look at these things right here. We're going to start with time. So watch time. I mean, some of these may be obvious, but I'm going to start with some of the obvious ones. Watch time is huge. So when you are watching a YouTube video, any type of YouTube video that you're watching, the person on the other side can see the watch time, how long you've watched the video, right? Or the typical watch time of the video, how many hours of the video has been watched. The next one is retention. So you want to also be able to see when a person is dropping off. So think of this as the drop-off rate as well. If you see, if you watch a video, so here's the thing, typically people watch a video from three to five seconds, right? Three to five seconds is where most of the drop-off comes. So if you don't have, if you, have you noticed the pattern and I was going to go to YouTube to see if I can show you one, but I don't want to show you all my business. Cause you know what I'm saying? My YouTube, everybody's got like a personalized YouTube, but the new age trend of video have you noticed that the first three seconds of a lot of videos are a recap or a clip that's taken from somewhere in the actual video? So they'll play a clip and then they'll take that clip, put it in the front of the video, get you intrigued, you know, get you hooked in it, and then bam, they'll go into it. If you have seen that, put a one in the chat. If you have not seen that, put a two in the chat. I'm curious to see how people seen that trend. That is a huge video marketing trend right now. A tactic. It's more of a tactic, but I'm calling it a trend tactic. Again, one is you see where they put a clip of somewhere in the video at the beginning of the video, then they go into the video. Two, if you've never seen that at all on any type of videos anywhere. So most people had not seen that. Okay, interesting. All right. 
So if you haven't seen that, look for it now. And then that way you can see if people are doing that, maybe I'm just gassing you up or maybe I'm giving you something that you may want to look out for. And again, it's one of those nuggets that you can do that will put you ahead of the game because retention is huge. And that is a trick to keep people engaged. That's why they do it three to five seconds. They put a clip of the most juiciest. They spill that tea. You ever that thing that wherever that part is, they say that one controversial statement or do that one crazy little ah thing. They put that right in the beginning of the video and then bam, get you in there. Now you got to watch the whole trailer. Now you got to watch the whole podcast episode because they got you in there. So yeah, they tease, they tease the meat of the content before starting and explaining the background. Exactly. That is a new tactic that is that people who know who are who are well experienced in the video marketing sector, they are doing that. It's huge, huge right now. I promise you, you all gonna see it. Okay, the next one is video completion. So this is based on time. You want to know who completes your videos. Why? You can see who completes your videos. You're able to market to them in a way where you can't market to the people who have dropped off. What do I mean by that? People who complete your videos typically are more interested in what you have to offer them. So therefore, if you were to send an offer to them via email, some type of Facebook ad or, or Instagram or Google ad based on them watching a video and completing it, there's a higher chance they're going to take on that offer because they completed the video. They are more interested than the people who dropped off you know, via the retention situation. So these are just a couple of time-based KPIs you want to look for, and your video typically will give you these KPIs, right? These metrics, these analytics. Analyticas. It's not really analytics in Spanish. Anybody who speaks Spanish, please don't kill me. I didn't mean to disrespect. I am from San Antonio, Texas, though, okay. All right. So and we I have a question from Kay. Yes. Alex, no problem. Let's see. Let's see. What it show? What what it show? What the percentage they watch? They watch seventy five to show if there was a trend. So the uh, cool part about what I'm going to show today, because we're about to get into more of the meat and potatoes of the presentation is that you can create automations uh, based on, and I'll share what that here is too, you create automations based on video completion times. And so, you know, 75% is a very valid and a high rate for a completion time. Because if they've seen 75% of it, good. You know, you should send some type of marketing message based on that, if you can, depending on your system. But, 100% is always going to be the best. 50%, you know, it's not as good as 75% because now it's like, oh, they 50-50, right? I don't know if I should really spend the money to or spend the time to mark the 50-50, wishy-washy. 25%, I don't definitely that lets you know that they really not, should you spend the time, money, resources, effort. But 75%, yes, I would definitely say that an action can be taken from, from that even maybe in the 65%, but I'm definitely going to show a scenario with that. So, so good question. Okay. Appreciate that. And let me know if that didn't at least address or touch on your question. And then let me know if you, if I don't get to it even more. Okay, great. So engagement. Engagement is another KPI category, right? That you want to think about these metrics that we're talking about the analytics you want to think about, and here are so five really strong ones you want to think about when it comes to your video marketing. So we have views and plays, right? So on YouTube, you, you would see views on your website and WordPress. When I'm going to show you with the plugin, you're probably going to see plays. So this is something that I call a vanity metrics. We typically look at these as likes. Well, not even likes because views are not even likes. I'm like, but they are in the same area of vanity metrics as likes, but they are important because you need to use this in order to create another metric, 
and I'm gonna show that here in a second. So you have views and plays, then you have clicks, right? How many people actually clicked through the video? Clicked on the video, clicked from the video. Did, what, what did they click based on this video? Because if you can get them to click based on the video, I'm telling you right now, you got them. You, the video did what it was supposed to do. If you got a person to click, it did what it was supposed to do. You got them. And that's why I love using videos. And I know a lot of you all love using videos and watching videos because it's one thing when you get a person to click the video to play. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about you get them to click based on the video they watched to somewhere else. If this is a numbers game, people. Never be 100%. But if you can get them to click, you got them. So that's where the click-through rate comes in. You have your clicks divided by your views and plays, and that gives them your click-through rate. And this is important because this lets you know the ratio between how many people are actually viewing versus how many people are clicking on the video. You might have a thousand people viewing or playing the video, only 10 people are clicking. What does that information tell you? And how does that help you reach your goal? If a person is clicking and the click is supposed to lead to some type of transaction, a sale, right, a form, some type of product or service that you're offering, then they're clicking it from the video. How does, how does that help your overall goal if one of your goals is based on transactions? So we have comments as well. These are really huge because this shows engagement. Now, when it comes to comments, you're typically going to see that more on Facebook and the social media, you know, Instagram, TikTok, those type of things. Your website, you won't really see it like on a WordPress where I'm going to show you all. You won't really see comments on the video directly. You would see comments on the blog posts. So that's the way we read interpret comments in the WordPress world, world, world. In the WordPress world, we'll interpret comments in the blog post area. But for YouTube and other places, they'll be directly on the video. And then shares is a huge engagement factor as well, too, when it comes to your video, because now you're creating advocacy. Um, now you're creating a referral system where people are, you know, basically marketing on your behalf. You're creating some brand advocates, knowingly or unknowingly, call them whatever you want to call them, but that is huge. You know, and so, yeah, it's all about pushing people down the yellow brick road to the funnel. All right. So let's get into video production. And I'm curious now that we are in this area, because this is where I'm really going to show a lot of demonstration. This is going to be live. It ain't gonna be perfect if I mess up or for some, you know, just bear with me. But this is what I'm telling y'all. I promise y'all, this is where you're gonna get the juice of this presentation. But I don't like to get to the juice till I help peel the oranges. You know, we gotta peel the orange, we gotta peel the lemons, we gotta get it prepared, we gotta do all that. Then we gotta do the squeezing, we gotta squeeze. And then once we squeeze, we get the juice. And then when we get the juice, we, we go, 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 go. You know, some of y'all probably got thirsty right there with the sound effects, right? That was live right there for y'all. But this is about to be the juice of the presentation. It's just showing y'all a, a video production slash marketing process in a way that would save you a lot of time, effort, and make you have the wham, bam, shabam. I'm talking about top flight. You know what I'm talking about? Top, top flight. flight security of the world, Craig. Not just the city, the world. Top flight security. I'm talking about top flight video marketing hub in this joint. All right, let's go. So I'm gonna launch this real quick. What is your experience with video marketing? Let's go. Get my little juice real quick. Grandpa's juice. Who knows? Y'all know what that means. There was a question from Dipti. What makes a video shareable? What makes a video? I didn't see that. Oh, I skipped that. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. I didn't mean to skip that one. What makes a video shareable? Well, depending on the platform that it's on, I would, and, and depending on the call to action and the virality of the video, if you are, if you have a video on WordPress and you don't have a certain functionality to be able to share that piece of content, well, you can't share that. We're used to seeing sharing 
functionalities on YouTube, Facebook, you know, when it's baked in the platform, that's a functionality you got to add in there. So one, that's what makes it shareable to have the functionality. Two, is it something that other people want to be proud to showcase? Like, do they feel, remember, it's a status game. When people share your stuff, that's making them look better. Like, who wants to share something to somebody that's going to make them look bad? You know what I'm talking about? Like, if why would you share something that's going to make you look bad? So does that thing that they're sharing make them look better? And do they have the capability of sharing through the functionality of where the video is placed? Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? So right now we have most people in here are, are, are inexperienced with video. I think that's a beautiful thing. So that means that a lot of this is y'all about to be sharing and showing and, and taking action, most importantly, on a lot of what you're going to see here today. But more importantly, y'all are being used to some I'm talking about crazy stuff, crazy stuff. All right, so let me end this poll real quick. All right. So most people don't have no, don't have experience in video marketing. So I'm, that's why I'm glad you're here. Very glad you're here. So let me prepare video production. Like I'm, I'm gonna have to open up the script here in a second. But what, what is video production? Video production is the process of creating a video. This can involve anything from filming a person talking to editing together footage from different sources. The final production might be used for marketing, education, or entertainment purposes. So video production is basically just producing a video. And I always wanna give you all a textbook answer. And I also, I did this intentionally because I'm gonna show you all a tool that will help eliminate a lot of the well, I don't know what the right maestro and I don't know, you know, how to create a script or what I should, you know, I listen, I'm that I did that too. We're going to help eliminate these, these roadblocks, these challenges. And I'm going to share, I'm going to show y'all share with y'all how we can eliminate these roadblocks, blocks and challenges using these tools out here. All right. Cause look, we ain't got time. We ain't got time to be wasting time. Ain't nobody got time for that. We ain't got time for wasting time. We got time to waste no time. All right, so I'm hitting myself there. What is the script? The script is the perfect production tool for creators looking to make professional level videos, podcasts, and screen recordings. With intuitive editing tools and an extensive library of media templates, the script delivers a full suite of features designed for content creation. So the script is one of my favorite tools to use for creating and editing videos, especially when you don't have a big production involved it is they have a free plan so it is free and then from there they have other premium plans which deliver more features i'm going to show you all really quickly what the script looks like i just hope i don't embarrass myself let me i'm stop sharing my screen real quick and i'm going to share the script real quick hold on one second me one second, y'all. Back to projects. Okay, all right. Let me stop sharing. Come on, come on. All right, cool. And let's share the. I guess I'll just share the whole screen at this point, so that way I ain't gotta keep going. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Y'all see the script? Y'all see my screen? Okay. So this is the script. Now, has, has anybody here heard of the script? Please put it in the chat. Put a one if you, if you have. Put a two if you have not heard of the script in the chat. I'm, I'm very curious here. One, if you've heard of the script, and two, if you have never heard of the script. Okay. We have a, we have a couple, couple ones, a few twos. 
if you want. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's almost it's almost even. Okay. Well, either way, I'm just glad that we have a a balanced because you know it's good when you have people that know and have used it, and it's also good when you have people that don't know and have never used it because you can show them. Now, here's the thing: the script has updated has a major update in the past couple months. So this is a different look of what the script looks like in comparison to what it looked like years ago. And so with the script, this is, this is the way that I'm editing these videos for these WordPress meetups, for these NEO meetups. Excuse me. And so this is one of the, um, the meetups, the sessions, speed up your e-commerce for 2023. So for those of y'all who did see this session, Give me, give me a, uh, give me a reaction if you don't, if you don't mind. Just give me a, a, a reaction real quick because I'm, I'm just curious. For those of you who did see the section, but either way, what the script gives you the ability to be able to do is you get to see your transcript, you get to see your your content, the written word here, you get to see the video, and then you're also able to see a timeline, which typically you're used to in some type of software like iMovie or Adobe Premiere or Final Cut. With, with Final Cut, with Adobe Premiere, with iMovie, with, come on, yeah, don't make me say the Windows Movie Maker. I mean, come on, the, the Windows Movie Maker. That's a, a two laughs and a chuckle. But yeah, you know, the iMovie, the uh, Windows Movie Maker, the Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, those are typically what you do your, 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 your editing in. But with the script, you can do way, way more, even for free. And you don't just have to use this for video editing. You can also use this for audio, for audio. A lot of people use this for podcasts, for, for tutorials, for movies. And they have a video library. So say I were to, let's go to a, a fresh start here. I'm going to go to a new project here. And I'm going to title this turn WordPress, just, just that. This new storyboard feature, they didn't have this before. So that's what I'm saying. This changed the game. This is why they are revving up the tutorial. They are doing so many videos to create tutorials. Once again, educational videos to educate their users. They went gung-ho on creating these educational tutorials and videos. And... They've created this media library. So I'm gonna show you real quick. Like for instance, if I add a video here, I'm down here to show you about, you know, editing. Now this is the cool part. I'm gonna show y'all something that's crazy, crazy, right? Crazy. All right, so here's the video. Here's the timeline at the bottom. Now the thing with this new version called storyboard mode is they have, they, the way that they, you know how you have, in the movies you have scenes? Well, they're using the term scenes in their storyboard mode, mode, storyboard, storyboard mode version. So you can have multiple scenes, like where you want to have multiple slides for images or movies or whatever throughout your video or throughout your transcript or throughout what you're saying. So let me show you all some other cool stuff. There's another cool part when it comes to AI. So let me do this real quick. I'm going to go back to... I'm doing this live. I'm letting y'all know this is about to be some crazy stuff. But if it, I get embarrassed, I get embarrassed. I don't care. Okay, so. All right, let's see if I can do this. Uh, you know what? I should have did the thing first. Hold on, let me see. See, see? You don't even want to. Right, let's try this one more time. Let's try this one more time. It worked before. Now it's trying to fail. Now it's trying to. Now it's trying to uh, play games with me. Oh, let me go to the right mode. That's my bad. So that's something that I have to get used to, and that is. Uh, I'm glad you saw that. Right? It was failing to pace because they have these thing called modes. Right now, I'm in editing mode, so it's where I'm editing the video itself. So that way, you get in this. Uh, 
uh, you don't have to mess up the words when you're going back and forth. So I needed to go to write mode right here. And then that way, now that I'm in write mode, as you can see, I can write out content. So that's a big part of the script. It's like using Google Docs with a video editor. So now that I'm in write mode and I paste something, it actually pastes it out. So another cool thing is because I, they have this AI feature where you can speak into the tool and read content, and then it, it memorizes the way you said what you said using AI, and then it will add that into the tool and use that to then read content that you just paste in there or you write in there in your own voice. And that's just me kind of like dumbing it down. So let's for, go for instance, I'm going to do So I'm going to, it's called, they call it overdub. So this is my voice. I already put my voice in here. It takes a little second to, and, and I didn't share the sound. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear it. So let me, uh, let me stop sharing and then let me share the sound real quick so that you are able to hear if it does work. Look, it's, it, it, this is, this is, it embarrasses me now. So let me get out of right mode. Let me press play. Video marketing is the use of video content to promote a brand or product. This can take many forms from short videos promoting a product or service to longer form documentaries about a company or its products. Video marketing can be used to drive traffic to a website or social media page, as well as to create engagement with customers and potential customers. Did y'all hear that? Let me know if y'all put that, put a yes in the chat if you heard that. Dancing. Let's say dancing in the wind. So look how I just dragged this on top of that. I'm gonna go back here. Video marketing is the use of video content to promote a brand or product. This can take many forms from So, I mean, this is the power of the script. It's very easy to create a video and even, you don't even have to use your, uh, you don't even have to speak. You could be, you know, headed to, uh, you know, at the airport, getting ready to get on the plane and it's loud. You don't have time to speak. Your voice is already in this tool. You want to put together a video before you get on the plane to head where you want to go. Boom, bam, bing, bada, bow. You know, just you can create content, video content with the tool and be able to do this. Go back to write. I can delete this. Write something new. See, it's like writing a Google document in a video tool. And as I can edit the words and I can edit the content and I can add media images, I can create new images new scenes. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to work because I didn't actually put a scene in there, but if I would have actually did that, you know, it's going to be able to create new scenes and then I can add new words and it's just being able to edit video in a very easy way. So once you do that, you export the video just like so. Interesting question from Deepti. Yes. How much audio do you have to provide to train the AI? They recommend you, you, you read for at least 30 minutes starting off with, but the more words you use, I mean, the more content you read, the better it learns and they have different styles. So that style, you just heard me read my stuff in was my boring style, but I could have read, I could have created a new style of voice. Happy go lucky. Hey, versus the young, oh, you're, 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 hey, ooh, all right, y'all, well, we going to ride this right now. We gonna, come on, y'all, we going to do... You have a way you can do so many different styles. You can do the styles if you want to do. You can do so many. Hi, you can do this. You can do, you can do you. You know what? You Y'all can do them stuff. Come on now. You know what? You got to read. So whatever dialect, I'm just, I'm just, I'm joking, but you can literally do, because it matters how people hear the dialect, not just the language of what you're doing, but the way you're saying it matters. And they allow you to do all different styles in this. But 30 minutes is the minimum. More than that, you're just giving it more content to feed to get you, to get you a better sounding voice for yourself.
And does it need to be recorded well? I mean, what that matters too. Recording okay. it in a good environment matters as well. So that's a good question. Yeah. Because it's not going to be able to, if you're recording in a loud environment with stuff behind you, it's going to be hard for it to separate that background noise from your voice and then be able to spit the, your voice back at you, you know, in that way. But exporting it, you are able to export it this way through either an export itself or through publishing the video. And then it creates a link where you don't even have to download this. You can just send people a page and the video is there. And then every time you edit this session, it you can update this. And this is one of my, I'm telling y'all, this is if you, especially if you're sending video to other people, this is save so much time because you don't have to keep doing the whole export, upload, download thing. You just publish it. You give them a link to the page it's published to, they can view it, review it, comment on it, and they can download it. And then if they need changes, you just go back here and you click update and it just updates on their end. You don't have to do any exporting, but this is the script. Uh, and this is how you can quickly make video content. So another way is you can record. If I hit this record button, I can have my camera screen here. So now you can see the camera. So now this is the way a person can record their screen for screen tutorials and the camera, which is really, really cool. And what's also cool is it puts it on separate tracks. This is just if I'm just recording my screen. So I just want to record me as a talking head video. Say I want to do a sales video. I want to put this in the middle of the, 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 you know, I just want to make a big video of just me talking right here. This is something I can do in the script. So you don't have to have a big video production situation going on to be able to create really high quality content videos. It even has subtitles. It has waveforms, so which is really cool. It has progress bars, which is really cool. Meaning like if, if, if there was talking right here on this part, you would see my voice. For example, here's a waveform. I, this is a tool that you see with professional video marketing is the, the use time. of video content to promote a brand or product. This can take many. So imagine doing that with your video. All right, let me keep, let me keep going on. I, I already kind of went ahead of my, went ahead of my set. So the video format you want to use, uh, typically use is landscape square or portrait. And I, like I said, if, if you all do want to, to have this be a part two, if you want to put in the chat, let's do a part two. I can, we can wrap it up here soon, or I can keep going and, and finish this and we can make this a little longer than the original time frame for the section, for the session. So video format, landscape, square, portrait. With the script, you can do this very easily. Landscape, square, or portrait. So if I wanted to make this bigger, just like you would do in any other regular program to make things bigger, you can do so like that. You can easily take this and again, put in something new very easily. And now we have a new scene, I mean, a new video. And then I can send this backward. So that way it's forms from short videos promoting a product or so it's pretty easy to change that's why i like this program because for those of y'all who are making different formats for instagram for vimeo not vimeo but talk etc cetera, etc cetera, you have that ability and that matters because the video format really does help you tell the story especially in the platform a lot better Okay, we have some we have some time. Okay, okay. Now, when it comes to pre-production, this is another thing, another gem that I wanted to share with you all. And some of y'all already know about this. Some of y'all don't. But those who you all who don't know about this, I'm giving you all gem, and this is you can use an alternative. But this is something that will help you create your videos a lot faster without having to actually do much of the work yourself. So let's go to one of my favorite tools here called Jasper. I'm gonna log in. 
So what is Jasper? Jasper is an AI tool. And I'm gonna start fresh. It's an AI content writing tool. Start from scratch. Now, how many of you all have heard of AI content writing? If you have, say yes. If you haven't, say no. Okay, so AI content writing. Okay, try to bunch. No, no, vaguely. So AI content writing is the new, it's, it's the hot new new. It ain't going nowhere. It's a way people are pumping out content. They are writing content. They are creating written content so fast and so efficiently that it is, you know, darn near, damn near, excuse my French, disturbing the whole industry of writers. It's disturbing the whole industry. Writers love it or writers hate it. They're typically not in the middle of it. And for people who are not writers, they typically love it because it helps them just get on with their day. At the end of the day, we, we need content. You don't always want to write content. You need to get on with your day. So this is why I said when it came to this presentation, I was using, now I already know the definitions of these things. I've written them out dozens to hundreds of times, but when you're creating a presentation from scratch, and you don't know, you just don't have, I just don't feel like doing all this too much thought process when I really want to give valuable content. So I decided, hey, let me use a tool and showcase the tool I'm using to write some of these definitions out. So I used the AI content writer. Now, the cool thing about Jasper is it has a, a extension, a Google Chrome extension they just came out with to be able to write the content. So let me show you first if I'm just kind of in the platform itself, then I'll show you the extension. So how would this work? For example, if I'm creating a video and I wanted to use a template, this is where we're gonna get into templates. So for those of y'all, and I'm gonna ask the, matter of fact, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the poll up right now because this is this is a good start to talk about these templates. So how many of y'all use templates, are aware of templates, understand what templates are? I'm, I'm just curious in the poll real quick because this is a process of using templates. And once you understand this, your life gets so much easier. You're able to create so much faster and you can then re kind of repurpose and almost recreate yourself in some ways. Okay, so most people would rather use templates. Okay, good. So most of you would rather use templates, which is good because that's what this is. You know, this, these, these tools, these are tools and these are content or writing templates. When I say they're content or writing templates, they are guides for certain scenarios, certain writing scenarios that you would use where you can input some ideas and it's gonna spit back out to you some content. Like it's gonna write back out, it's gonna output some content. What AI writing tools do is they scour and search the internet to search for information. Well, at the same time, they are using algorithms to be able to say, this is the best word based on the content, this user, this person, this input I've been given, this is the best next word to use in this situation. And I'm gonna scour the internet. I'm gonna scour the, all the information at this, at this moment, like in milliseconds, in nanoseconds, I'm gonna scour all the information to look for as much as I can. I'm not gonna be perfect because I, I only know so much. And at the same time, I'm gonna use algorithm to say, what is the next, next best word and all this is happening, I'm talking about at the drop of a dime, but it's happening to us. So for instance, if I wanted to create a, if I wanted to create a video, I'm gonna use these YouTube templates, right? I'm gonna create a video of somebody in the chat real quick, give me an idea, we're gonna do this live. Give me an idea of what I should 
get some ideas, create a video about. I'm going to take the first ones. I'm going to let those in there. Souvenir items. All right. Well, we get specific out here, huh? <laughs> is it is it Dean Moore? Did Moore? <laughs> we get let? Thank you. All right. So let's talk about souvenir items. We don't really have to fill out this one. I'm gonna do a fun. I'll do a witty voice for now. All right. So let's clear these. I was hoping it was gonna clear up all this stuff. I guess I gotta do that that way. Okay. Cool. So I'll do it again. Souvenir items. Da -da 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 -da. We'll do witty and then generate AI content. So what you see here on this left side, this is me using the templates. I'm gonna show you here on the right side, that's gonna be me freestyling. And that's where you really see the power. Like you'd be like, wow, this thing is really crazy. So these are ideas, 10 souvenir items that are actually useless, the most ridiculous and outrageous souvenir items ever, how to avoid buying tacky souvenir items cheap. So it's basically pumping me out different ideas to create a video about, right? So I can take one of these ideas, I'm gonna just show you in real time, practical, 10, 10 souvenir items that are actually useless. That's, I, I know that's probably not where we're going with that, but whatever. Let's go to script outline. All right. So what is this video about? 10 souvenir items that actually uses the keyword we're going to rank for souvenir items. And we're going to say the tone is once again witty. So sometimes when you do that, they give you like what could be the title. And then they give you other, these are just ideas, right? This is the whole purpose of this is to keep us from starting from scratch, y'all. I don't like starting from scratch. So if I can use a tool to keep me from starting from scratch so I can get on my day and it's a tool that's efficient, I'm gonna do that. So here, the most pointless souvenir items in the world prepared to be amazed. Now, this is where you don't just let the AI tool do the work for you. If I wasn't doing this, presentation i wasn't trying to just get through this i would be sculpting molding i would be reiterating tweaking putting it in my voice my brand voice but i ain't got time for that right now you know what i'm saying so so we got to do it all right let's go to titles let's go to script description okay so let me hold on let me make sure i got this title real quick the most pointless souvenirs in the world i'm gonna copy this all right so let's get a script and hook. You see, I'm doing this in real time. I'm going kind of down the yellow brick road. I started with, let's get that idea. Let's get a title. Let's get a hook. I'm going to use this hook to create an outline. This is just a way for you to be able to create a script and be able to put that in the script to create your video. So generate some AI content. I'm not going to even do the tone of voice in this one. So I'm going to just get through it. Hook. Ever wondered what the most pointless souvenirs in the world are? Wonder no more because I'm about to show you some of the dumbest things people buy as souvenirs. Introduction. Hi, my name is Maestro and I'm a travel junkie. I've been to all sorts of different places and seen all sorts of different things, but nothing makes me laugh <laughs> more than when I see someone buy a really dumb souvenir. So today I'm going to show you some of the most pointless things people buy as souvenirs from all around the world. This could be something you can use as the hook into your video. Why is this important? Is because you don't want to be spending time on this you but you need to have a hook a hook is not a description a hook is a way to get a person in that three to five seconds immediately in based on what it is you're going to deliver to them for the generation or the duration of the rest of the video but you gotta hook them in this thing just helped me create three different hooks i can look at i could be like i like it i don't like it i want to tweak it boom bam bing now let me add this into the script Right? Boom. Copy in here. See, do you see where I'm going with this, though? Okay. Copy in here. Let me add my speaker. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me add my speaker, y'all. All right. Now, let's see if, let's see if it, I'm, I'm curious if it did it without me adding a speaker. Hook, in this video, I'm going to show you some of the most pointless look souvenirs that. in the world that you'll ever see. These are items that you should avoid at all costs if you don't want to look like a tourist. Now, again, this is my boring voice <laughs> doing it, but imagine if I had my good voice. I got to put my good shoes on, right? Imagine if I had my good voice using that one, you know what I'm saying? That would, I just used a tool and put it in another tool. 
to do some tool stuff and I ain't got to do much of anything and I can just pump this video out and put it up in. So I wanted you all to see the power of the script when it comes to editing. I can easily just, let me move this out the way real quick. If I want to go in here and I want to shorten this video up. Now see these, this is not audio. So that's the reason why I can't do what I can do like with this clip right here, because this is a video, this is a media. This right here is technically just text. So that's why I can't do much. You know what I'm saying? Now, okay, well, I thought it wasn't, I thought it wasn't gonna let me. But you can't do the same if I were to try to do like if this is video or or audio, it wouldn't be able to let me do some other type of editing features that you can only do to voice i mean not through voice but audio or you can only do through actual video this right here is technically just text it's just you see these these lines right here these waveforms because it's using my overdub voice but either way you see i can just trim it down if i want to so this can take me and just cut the video and as i trim it down it's actually cutting the words too that was the thing that i was just making sure that i could actually do and it wasn't a glitch because sometimes since this is a new version of the script it does bug out and you'll ask yourself is this a glitch or is this a limitation and i found that out a lot of times and nobody taught me none of that because this is a new it's a new version of it so let's let's take this let's put this video back in landscape for example and i'm going to easily just delete that see how I just got rid of that. I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to publish this as if and we're just pretending like I just made an actual full fledged video. I'm not going to publish it. Excuse me. I'm going to export it. So let me export the current composition. And we'll call it turn WordPress and it downloads. And so now that it's exporting. We'll pretend like I just wrote this cool script in, in this AI tool, Jasper, and I'll show you really, really quickly. I could have did the same thing. So, right. So, does anybody want to put another subject for? Because we're going to let's test Jasper out again. I, people really do get amazed when I test Jasper out this way. Anybody want to put another subject in there for Jasper to write something about creating a video, anything, a dolphin? All right. You could, we, we could get, okay, right a story about oh no right a right say video ideas about a dolphin named now this is where i'm gonna take y'all back ace venture the pet detective i just i'm just i'm just Detective, detective. That's one of my favorite movies growing up, Ace Ventura. So it's Jim Carrey. All right. So write a video ideas about a dolphin named Ace Ventura, the pet detective. All right. So you see what it's doing right now. I just basically told it to give me some ideas. And we have introduction, Ace Ventura, the pet detective. In this video, we'll follow Ace Ventura as he solves a puzzling case involving a missing dolphin using his detective skills naturally finished so this is actually taking some of the movie because the movie was so popular versus see I, I, I was being too specific so if i wasn't being as specific because there was a movie actually called uh, ace ventura and it was about him being a pet detective but if i said you know write some of ideas about how to save dolphins how to save dolphins and i'll say i'm going to be specific right seven video ideas about how to save dolphins and dipti is asking a question how about technical con content php Speci specifying or relating to what exactly if you don't mind for example php you know like technical anything as far as writing writing content yeah, like yeah. Oh, oh oh yeah absolutely absolutely so you saw that we have write seven ideas for how to save the dolphins as an example. Write video ideas about how to use or learn PHP. So 
So this is what I'm showing you that you can give it commands, tell it to do something like you're telling an assistant, an admin, and it will do so. So either way, how to learn PHP in an hour, you can say, write a video script, write a video script for how to learn PHP in an hour. So you see it's writing in real time, a script, and I could just keep continuing to write the script. Now, because it's taking from this right here, what it does is it reads everything above it. If I didn't have any of this content, it would still keep following the pattern of writing the script out. But again, this is all about teaching yourself. You don't have to start from scratch. You can use some type of AI writing tool. There are many out there and you can write the content. And then once you write the content, you can put it in Descript or something like that, or you can use it to help you create your video in general. So that's a lot about scripting, casting the crew. I, I just wanted to touch on this because a lot of us who are doing video production, we're not really casting the crew. And hopefully you can see that I use the, cast here as a little joke, you know, to kind of, but uh, yeah, we're not really casting crews for or casting anybody when it comes to pre-production. And a lot of us aren't doing location scouting, but if you are doing location scouting, that's a part of your pre-production process. But with Descript though, you do have the ability to use a, you know, do it all in one with yourself by yourself. So I just showed you production. And I showed you a lot of post-production, you know, being able to cut, edit, and share. So let's get into the video marketing piece real quick. Let me close this down. And all right. So video marketing with Presto Player. Presto Player is one of the most flexible media players for WordPress with features such as multiple video sources, video chapters, sticky video, email opt-in, gate, analytics, and more. And the reason why I wanted to touch on Descript and Jasper was because a lot of us don't even have the necessary tools or the right tools or a good set of tools to be able to create our video for before we get into WordPress and add our video to our website. So that's why I wanted to share, this is how you would create your content, create your media, and then now we can use this tool to add it to the website itself. Where did my polls go? It just kind of just disappeared on me. Okay. All good. Now let's go into, I'm going to dive into Presto Player here and show you, this is how you would set up Presto Player. But before I do that, let me reshare my screen. So that way I have, make sure y'all can see everything. Uh, all right, all right. So for those of y'all who are new to WordPress, I've already added Presto Player to WordPress. But if you have not seen how to actually add a plugin to your website of WordPress. Once you're in WordPress, you would go in and you would either type in the plugin name or type in the keyword that would lead you to the plugin. So for example, you would type in Presto Player like that, or since Presto Player is a video plugin, I would type in video and then you would see it right here. I already have it activated, so that's why you see it say activate, but if it was not activated, you would see it say install. And this is one of the most lightweight video-based plugins here in the WordPress ecosystem when it comes to plugins. That is the reason why most of this presentation is centered around it, because this is a complete video marketing plugin that I don't think gets a lot of its dues. But, you know, that could be for many reasons, but either way, 
It is tried, it's true, it's backed by a great team, and it works really, really well when it comes to video marketing. Mm -hmm. And there is a question from Cleet. How does Presto Player impact the site speed? So like I said, Presto Player is a very lightweight plugin. So anything that is lightweight is going to be light on site speed, on being able to give you the performance factors that it needs in order to keep your site from, you know, I mean, in order to keep your site from being bogged down. So it is very, very great on site speed. I thank you for the question as well. So that's how you add Presto Player to the website, right? All right, now let's go to what it looks like on the inside. And the only reason why I create these slides, because I'm not a big fan of slides when I'm doing presentations, I'd rather just show you all. But the only reason why I created these slides is because I know that some people do want the slides once we add them to the WordPress.tv, once we add the actual presentation. So let's go to Presto Player real quick. I'm going to add, go to a new page. And we'll be able to see here. All right, so if I was adding Presto Player, I'm right now, if you're new to WordPress, I'm in Gutenberg, which is the WordPress editor. This is how you build WordPress websites without having to use other page builders or other plugins that are based on page builders in order to kind of drag and drop your content the way, where you immediate, where you want it. And this is what the WordPress editor is. The code name is Gutenberg. So for Presto Player, you would type in Presto here, and you would add a video there. I mean, you would add your content block here and then add the video. It's just that easy. For So let me go to one that I can show you I've already created a page for. Edit. But I just want to show you from scratch. That's how easy it is to just drag the, the block here and then add the video URL. Oops, wrong one. Let me, let me give you all two and two and one here. So this is where you can get fancy and I'll show you here in a second. Let me take this uh, YouTube video here. And I'm gonna add this URL here. Now, for those of y'all who have, who don't like watching trailers, especially for you know, Marvel movies, I apologize, but I just want to show you an example. Okay, so I just added the YouTube video URL for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And on the right-hand side, you can see I have these settings. Now, because I'm using Presto Player Pro, so let me go back here and just prepare to take off the Pro. I just want to show you all the Pro version. I'm using Presto Player Pro. I'm able to have the ability to add presets here. So presets are templates. Remember I said that word template before? So presets are templates that you can create with, with your video and you can create these different experiences that your video creates based on these templates. All right, so let me go here real quick and show you all. And then they have default templates and presets as well too. So these are also skins that you can see that your video will look a little different based on what you're showing, based on the preset. So what this looks like in real time, if I publish this real quick as an example, and then I view this. We can see that we have the play button, we have this stream button, we have the sound, all, you know, we have these things that we take for granted when we're on YouTube or when we're on other platforms. But if we can use these in order to help our video marketing efforts, when we can control these, then we can say, okay, well, when do we want to give certain controls and certain features based on where our customer or our prospect or our audience is in our journey? Do we really want them to have access to be able to move forward or change 
certain speed settings? Do we want them to rush to the video? Is this a video that they need to watch this whole video in order to increase the chances of them becoming a user, a register, a subscriber, a customer, whatever the case is. So that's what these presets are all about. And it's more than that. That's on the surface level. Under the hood, let's just say I'm making a new preset. And this is where it gets really funky. So turn WordPress. I'm just going to keep using this as a preset. So here I can decide what kind of skin I want it to look like. Then I can say what kind of controls I want it to have. So if I was doing a talking head sales video, I typically would not want people to fast forward. They can probably rewind, but they can't fast forward. I may not even want them to have the progress bar. You know, current time, they may have that. I may not want them to have current time. So I get the ability to be able to say, hey, this is what I want on this video that gives me the best chance of getting my conversion or reaching my goal because I'm eliminating options. And too many options is not a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna go back here. We'll go to behavior. Same thing, I can add, I can auto hide the controls. So when you auto hide, it's when you scroll over it and then it shows the controls and when you don't scroll over it, it, it takes away the controls. So it just shows the whole video. Save play position, that's all about if a person clicks off of the tab and they click back to the tab or they close the video and come back to it, does it save the play position when they play the button? You can choose that too. So all these are about giving you features. Sticky on scroll, you can decide when a person scrolls the video, where does it stick to? This is all about giving you features that you will not see in any other video plugin in WordPress as of you know, today when it comes to creating or showing your video. And then when YouTube, this is really, really cool. So hide YouTube. This is experimental feature right here for Pro. This is something that is one of those hidden gems that you want. Let me update this real quick. So you see I'm on this preset, turn Word, WordPress. I'm going to refresh this. This was a YouTube video, right? So see how I just stopped it and played it again? Notice that there are no YouTube. When I, when I, when I pause it, there are no YouTube thumbnails. So now you can use YouTube as your hosting provider, which is free, right? You can, you can double down and say, I want to host certain videos on YouTube, but I also want to put those videos on my website. But when I'm putting them on my website, I don't want them going back to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So that adds more professionalism to your video and doubles down on the fact that YouTube is a free hosting platform and video hosting can get expensive. So isn't that really cool? That's why I'm saying like this is a plugin that a lot of people sleep on, but they don't know that it will give them more functionalities in the realms of video marketing than any other plugin that I can think of right now. All right. So that's video presets for you. You can keep going with it. I'm not going to go too much deeper into it, but like I said, you can do everything from styling. So you can change the color of, of this. You can add logo onto it. You can add captions. So many different things that you can do when it comes to this. The email capture. Now, I do got to show this because I'm going to show this here, here soon. With this video, now imagine being able to use your video to be able to capture emails directly on the video. If you've seen that, put a one in the chat. If you've seen that on a video, please put a one in the chat. I don't know where my polls have gone. They just like disappeared on me. Okay. So being able to capture an email through a video is crucial when it comes to signups, when it comes to conversions, when it comes to maximizing your opportunity to get more people into your email list. I mean, imagine being able to do that through a video. Same thing with a call to action. So on the video, you can say, get this product now. 
So now I have a call to action. All right, now, and then the button text, get me now. I know I'm just saying a lot of, but this is how you can create a call to action for the video. So a person can literally click this button right here and you add your link here and it links them over to the product or service or whatever it is you wanna do through the video. They don't have to go anywhere else, click anywhere else. That is one of the biggest concept tactics of video marketing how you can get somebody to do something what you want to do directly on the video without disruptor, disruption and then we have an action bar which is the little bar at the bottom so same thing being able to add a button here and saying there you go now now on the video you can say hey i want this action bar to start at 50 percent of the video so at 50% of the video, this little action bar is going to come out. Another call to action feature on the video. That's why I'm saying this is a very powerful tool because you're able to do things that you can't do with the regular WordPress a YouTube or video block or in any other plugin in WordPress. And video is huge, huge. So you can do all that fancy stuff on your WordPress site with this plugin, which your video. And then you can add your watermark here you want to add some type of logo a watermark for your video so those are just some concepts of word i'm mean not wordpress but using wordpress for video marketing via the presto player plugin and i just showed you some marketing features the call to action the action bar lead capture you saw the automation i'm gonna show you more of that in a minute Muted autoplay, I'm going to show you that here real quick too. Dynamic content overlays and branding. And then we have some experience. I call them experience benefits. So this is where you can add your transcript. You have your chapters. So as I mentioned, you, have, you can add chapter markers, which is really cool. So say you are doing a learning management system. You know, you're doing some type of course on WordPress. And you want to have chapters for your course for the for the for the uh, for the video boom bam bing you put them right here on the video itself these are your chapters or you say you do a long video you're doing a podcast video podcast you want to have chapters for your podcast this is how you do it you add the chapters here and that's a great way to give people quick points where they want to go to when they want to go and it creates more user it creates a better user experience save positions i showed you that so if a person leaves the video or has to leave for whatever and come back it saves their position student viewer tracking so that's for teaching private videos and sticky player are also experienced type of benefits that you get so say you put a video at the top of your page and then the person scrolls down the page and that video sticks to the right hand or left hand corner as they're scrolling down the page reading the content or just seeing the pictures and listening to the video or watching the video. It creates a better experience for them. So email marketing, this is where I can tie it together, where we tie the video over to your email marketing system or tool. So email marketing in a nutshell is a form of direct marketing that uses electronic mail to send commercial messages to a group of people. It usually refers to sending a message to a large number of people at once, such as a newsletter or promotion. And Fluent CRM, this is the tool that I use for email marketing in WordPress, but you can use whatever tool you want to use for email marketing, and this will work. Fluent CRM is an email marketing automation WordPress plugin that is self-hosted from your WordPress or from your website. You can manage leads, customers, and automation while getting detailed analytics of your email marketing campaigns. All right, so let me show you real quick from a really cool practical standpoint of how this works. Here's Fluent CRM. I haven't done anything with it, but this is email marketing tool, and I'm going to create a tag. Say that right now, blah, blah, blah. So whatever email marketing tool you would use, you would create a tag or a list with your tool. So I'm gonna create a tag. I'm gonna say video watched. Now, this is just for practice sake, so don't even take, take this literally. And I'm just gonna say video for the list. So I created a tag called video watch, a list called videos. 
So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to refresh this video. I'm going to go back to my preset here. And I'm going to connect the email capture. Boom, CRM. And it's going to ask me, what list do you want to put it in? Boom, videos. What tag? Boom, watch. This is how I literally now, a person has watched the video. I can say, I want this video email feature to display at the beginning of the video, halfway the video, or at the end. You choose. And now I've captured their email through the video and it's going to my email service provider, which so happens to be a plugin called Fluent CRM. Now, this is why I said to y'all, don't worry, you're in good hands because Presto Player has the ability to allow you to send to multiple different videos. I mean, email marketing tools. So you can send natively active campaign, mailer light, MailChimp, and then you can send to, to other video, I keep saying video, but email marketing platforms via webhooks. And that's another tutorial for another day, but I just wanted to share with you all that you can capture emails with this tool from your video. That's video marketing. You use the video, get an email. Now you got them in your email marketing, and now you can actually start doing email marketing. That's video marketing. You're just extending the video into a marketing strategy, you know, a marketing campaign. And that's why I'm sharing this picture here because it's already a plugin on the website. But if you were to connect it to anything else, you typically would need an API key. All right? If it's not a plugin, you typically would need some type of API key. Once you get the API key, it'll show your, your list, your tags, or however it seems. Now let's get into SEO. And I think we did have somebody in here that was inquiring about how this works with SEO. So I'm gonna share that real quick too as well. So video SEO is the process of optimizing videos for search engines. This can include optimizing the title, description, tags, and other elements that help videos rank in search results. Video SEO can be beneficial for businesses because it can help them reach new audiences and drive more traffic to their websites. So let's talk about the video SEO tool we're gonna to use in this particular situation, which is Rank Math. Rank Math is an SEO tool that helps you map, optimize your website for better search engine ranking. It includes a variety of features such as sitemap submission, canonicalization, and breadcrumbs genera generation. It also offers a number of integrations with other popular tools such as Google Analytics and Yoast. And most of us, when we think about SEO and WordPress, we know the big kahuna, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, which is Yoast. But Rank Math is, I would say, a great competitor alternative of Yoast. A better bang for your buck. And even in the free part of Rank Math, you get more than what you get in the paid part of Yoast. So Rank Math, for example, how does this have to do with video SEO? Okay, let's talk about it. So video schema. This is something that we don't know the technical nuances of it and you don't have to. I just wanna show you from a picture standpoint because I'm sure you've seen this in Google. This is what video schema type is. And this plugin is gonna help you get this kind of magically where you don't even gotta know all the nuances of technical, but it's gonna give you this power, this juice to get your videos on your website in Google looking like this. This is what this plugin is gonna help you do. So that's why you see this video, this nice little thumbnail here in Google, and you see the title of the video here, and it's featuring your video in a very rich way, which we'll get here in a second, but it's featuring it in a very interactive way, and it's doing more than just text. So I'm very sure a lot of us have seen this. This is what this plugin will help you do video schema type. And if you want to know more about it, you can always go to Rank Math's help docs and it basically will tell you exactly what video schema type is. And it tells you what you need to do in order to add video schema to your website. You just toggle on a setting and you're pretty much good to go. 
So I just wanted to share that with you. They give you really good documentation. It's literally a toggle of a setting. And you just would toggle it on right here. Video schema, structured data, boom, you out of there. Now you got the power that your competitors, that professionals, that other people have in Google. All right, so rich snippets. This is similar to video schema, but this is something that you see that you don't, you don't necessarily see a video here, right? This is more about information. So they will say the, this is more about the kind of like getting the feature and the look, the visualization of it. And this is more about, sorry, rich snippet is more about the details, the information of it. So again, if you want to know more about schema markups, I don't want to get too deep into it though. You can go to rank math and look up schema markup, but I just wanted to show you that when it comes to like having like the star reviews for like the recipes or events and things like that, it gives more content in this little, we'll call it excerpt here, a little box here, even some breadcrumbs. This is how you get that. Rank math will do it for you. You don't even gotta know too much about it. You just gotta make sure it is turned on. And that way you can get your videos and the pages your videos are on marked up the right way. So you're getting more, you're getting a better way of being seen in the search results. You're, you are competing better in the search results by using this plugin or plugins like Rank Math to give you SEO powers and features with your video. And then you have video sitemap. This is very important because this is what gives kind of a listing of all of the videos on your website. And it helps Google be able to see all the pages of all the videos or all the videos that are on your website in a very, very easy way. And that also gives you a better way of getting listed or being seen or being ranked in Google for your videos by having a video sitemap. Most people are just used to like their page sitemap or regular sitemaps, but this gives you a video sitemap. And just like any of the other resources I've showed you, Rank Math has documentation. All you gotta do, toggle on a switch and it gives you the video sitemap. And this is a pro feature of Rank Math. But the free version gives you a lot of things that you can use for SEO as well too. This is just one of those boosts, we'll call them a boost, boost features that Rank Math gives you if you have the pro feature, but Rank Math is pretty cheap. It's only 60 bucks a year. I'm not sure if they're still doing a sale for the 40 bucks a year. I mean, for the 50 bucks a year, but for the whole year, you get all these professional features that you would get in the pro version. And I'll show you real quick right here. And they do tell you what is pro and what is not. They are very transparent and clear about that. But your regular site map, you get for free, right? Schema markup, Structured data, you get for free. Getting indexed in the Google, you get for free. So there are a lot of things you get for image SEO, you get for free. But those couple things like the video site map, that's one that you is a pro version of the feature of the plugin. Let me go back to this. So hopefully that helped with, I, I forgot who had, let's see, got any questions. Rich snippets and the motivation to see it in search results, they get way more. And they do rich snippets. So that's that's big key right here. And this is why you if you pair rank math with Presto player, you're you're gonna you're gonna rank a lot faster than your competitors. A lot easier. So you're gonna rank a lot faster, a lot easier. Now, yes, your content matters, what you create matters, but when you pair these two together. You have Presto Player delivering your videos in a very robust and high performance way, meaning it's lightweight, it's fast, it's really great on your website, and it's giving you all these features. And then you have Rank Math working with Google and other search engines to be able to show your videos in the search engines. You know, you pair those two together, you're going to get free traffic because that's the whole purpose of doing this is to get free traffic, not paid traffic, not earn, you know, not social media traffic but free traffic that is coming from Google that 
you wouldn't get other otherwise you get over time and it doesn't cost you a dime other than what it costs you of the tools to set yourself up and then you know the resources it costs you to create the content but you're not paying for cl clicks impressions etc etc cetera, et cetera. that's why I, I believe this is a gold mine when you use these two things together so let's talk about automation and then we are pretty much done after after i think analytics if i'm not mistaken so automation real quickly is the process of using software to manage and automate marketing tasks and activities it can include email marketing social media marketing and digital marketing marketing automation allows businesses to target customers with specific messages track the results of their campaigns and optimize their efforts over time so why am I speaking on marketing automation? And all of this content that I'm creating right now is something that I eventually probably will create a course around because these are the nuggets. These are the strategies, I believe. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there you can do, but there are certain things, if you do just a few things and you do them well, you are quicker to reach your goals and save yourself time and be able to relax and make money in the meantime while you do that. Automation is one of those ways to do so because there's so many things happening around your business. If you can just automate those processes, especially in the digital world, you're going to be able to have, a, have much more peace of mind for your life. But uh, Short Triggers, what makes it special is that it's a headless automation platform. And it's managed by a plugin that connects to WordPress to multiple sources. So when I say headless, I mean that the actual processes that SureTrigger is, is doing while it's automating your website, the actual information, you know, the bloat of SureTriggers, it's not even happening on your website. It's happening on a whole other platform. It's just, it's connected to your website through this plugin, but it's happening on a whole other platform, meaning your website is going to be more lightweight. It's going to be faster but still be able to do as many automation tasks as you can do and you want to do without slowing down your website. And that's not typically the case with other plugins. So that's what makes this different and a little revolutionary in the WordPress space, if not a lot revolutionary. As I mentioned, it's lightweight and it was created for WordPress for automation simplicity so that you can easily sync data from one WordPress website to another. So this is what Sure Triggers looks like. of the dashboard and they are changing they're getting ready to get out of their beta and have it be in the wordpress repo so you will not find it right now in the wordpress repository but you will find it here in the next month or two and that's the reason why you say this we're making big changes to the platform and this is all about them doing like you know getting ready to prepare but basically this is the interface and you create your automation here and you would create your automation for example I wanted to add a trigger for a video and say, I want to use Presto Player. I'm going to search for a video. A user watches at least a specific percentage of a video. So I remember we had a question about, you know, the whole 75%. This is what I'm saying. You can literally say, hey, I want to say that a person watched. So you see how I'm going through the WordPress website. Then I'm going through the video and say if a person watched. 10, 50%, 70%, I'm going to move these things out the way, 90%, I can choose what percentage a person has watched the video. So now this is, now that I have my trigger set, I said, this is what I want to happen. You know, like when this happens, now I'm going to say what I want to happen. From there, I can add them to a tag, right? And this is where you also see my other websites or other properties. That's why I said it connect, you can connect your website to a whole other WordPress website with this plugin, which for with other WordPress plugins, this was not easy to do. This is game changing because a lot of us use multiple websites, right? We use a front end website, you know, the public website, but then for our learning management system, our courses, for our e-commerce store. For our community, we use a whole different WordPress install. Imagine being able to send data from your main site, your primary site, your front-facing site to your subdomain easily with this tool. 
without having to know a whole bunch of glitz and glamours about automation. So that's what this does. So let's say I was sending it to one of my other websites. I don't have installed on that. Who was here installed on that one? So see how it told me you don't have installed on that one, but this one now I do. So I can add, say you know I can say this user has watched seventy five percent of this video. Tag them and add them, or send them a message. Send them a coupon. Send them some help, some support. Hey, hey, you need a little help? I see you didn't complete the video. You know, don't make it scary now, like you watching them across the internet type stuff like that. But use this to send them a message, to personalize a message based on their activity. And this is with video, with Presto Player. That's why I said this tool gives you the ability to do actual video marketing. And this is when a user watches your video, not when traffic. So keep that in mind, meaning a person has to be a user on WordPress where you can make this happen. If they're a stranger, a guest, you obviously don't have their email. They're not a user. So you can't, you know, create something to happen from them. But that's something that I think is huge that a lot of people don't know that they can do off of a video. I can trigger an action. I can make something happen off of somebody taking an action on my video. Yes, you can. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. All right, now this was the really cool advanced part right here I wanted to show. And I had my developer help me set this up. So I didn't do this by myself. But uh, this was the really cool part I wanted y'all to see when it came to custom fields and using Presto Player. And this is a little advanced, but it's very easy to do. That's why I said I had to have my developer show me real quick because I ain't a developer, but I want to make sure that if I can do it, y'all can do it. So I use a plugin for custom fields and custom post types called Metabox. But there is also two free plugins that you can use called advanced custom fields and custom post types. And you can pretty much do the same thing. But I'll show you where, what, is, what is we talking about here. A custom post type is a WordPress post that is not one of the default post types, such as posts or pages. Custom post types can be created by plugins or by adding code to your themes functions PHP file. Adding custom fields to a post type is a great way to add extra information about that post type. For example, you could add a field for the price of a product or the date of an event. And when you combine this with that, the rich snippets in the video schema that I told you, you can actually have the date of the event from your custom post type actually be in this information here. So custom post type real quick. What I challenged myself and my developer, I said, we need to do, because we've done this before, but I want to do it here again for you live. But I said, let's say if somebody wanted to create a video blog. In WordPress, you do not have a post type for video blogs. You have your regular blogs called posts, and you have your pages. But you do not have a post type here for video blogs. So we created this custom to create a video blog. So for example, I'm gonna go to Metabox. This is what I use to create the post type. This is the first thing you wanna do. And I create, we created a new post type. So you would hit new post type, but I'm gonna show you what we created. And we named it video blog. So this is the plural name and then it actually for the singular name. You don't really need to do anything in here. This is the cool part. You don't even need to touch that. And then you can give it a picture. So we chose a video for the picture. That's why you see this little video icon. From there, we want to say that this particular post type right here, this video post type, we would be able to associate it with these type of other information, post type information. One, which is custom fields. So we want to make sure that we associate this post type with custom fields. And then from there, we clicked update. We didn't do anything else. So that was just to make this post type right here. From the custom field standpoint, we wanted to create a way to show Presto Player or show our videos in an easy way. So when we just add the video link or URL down here, it'll automatically add the video. So for instance, I edit this field group and I say, and click this drop down. 
video URL. This is what we named it. So this is the video URL. And then this is the ID. So when you make the video URL, it automatically, I mean the label, excuse me, it creates the ID. This is gonna be the magic right here. And this is why this is super simple and easy to do. So let me do, let me go here real quick and show you all how easy this is. And all we did was presto, you go to prestoplayer.com and the knowledge base and you just click custom. It gives you, I'm gonna show you how we got this. Go to short code or you can press short code. And all we did was copy this short code right here. Literally, all we did was copy that and put that right here in the short code block. So say you made a short code block right here, you would copy that and put that right there. So I'm gonna erase this. And then from this short code block right here, we added this ID. I know it says video URL, but we added the ID right here because that's what they told us to do in the directions. My custom field ID. So this is the ID, we added that here. And then we wanted to add a, a mute to it. So that gives you these other parameters called muted autoplay. I'm gonna delete this real quick to show you all that if I did not mute, that then if I did not have this, and you see this URL is down here, it's gonna take this URL, it's gonna magically pop it in here. It's gonna magically put it in here. So if I was writing a blog or doing a video blog and I, I wanted to have the same content, I wanna keep it consistent and I only wanna put a URL here, I don't have to keep putting this blog, this short code here, da, 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 da. I would just put the URL here and watch. If I go to a page, I mean, go to this page here, you're gonna see that it plays on auto replay. But if I update this, I mean, it plays on auto mute. If I update this, cause I took out that, that mute parameter, it's not going to auto play. So now you see that I just created a custom post type, my own video blog post type in WordPress. And from there, I was able to add a YouTube video and Presto Player works with Vimeo as well too. So if I go to Vimeo and add any video from Vimeo, for example, copy link address and update. Now some videos are private with Vimeo and some aren't, but see how easy that works. I just changed a Vimeo video from a YouTube video and it's and it still looks nice it looks consistent so that's the power of adding a custom field with presto player and then using this custom short code right here this custom field short code and then you just put your video id with it and the same concept works with advanced custom fields so that's why i wanted to share with you all cuz most people are used to advanced custom fields when it comes to creating custom Content, where's that? So Metabox, I'll deactivate real quick. And then I'll activate these two. And there we go. We made another one called Video Blogs 2. So if I go to Custom Posts or Edit and Add Posts, you can see. Where is that? Where is it at? Where is it at? Oh, edit post type, I'm sorry. Here's that post video right here, video blogs two. And we made it just like we did in Metabox. And then we did the same thing with advanced custom field. We made a field group and we just called it video blog custom field. Same thing, here's the, here's the ID. So you can do it with whatever custom field, custom post type you want. But at the end of the day, the whole purpose is, is that you can create your own vlog, blog, whatever you want to create, and then use this way to actually extend your video marketing capabilities and do it in a templated way. And 
analytics, this is the last part right here that I know a lot of people kind of get lost in the sauce in. But I do want to touch on it real quick. I'm not going to get too deep into analytics, but I do want to touch on it real quick. So analytics is basically the process of inspecting, cleansing, transforming, and modeling data with the goal of discovering useful information, insights, and understanding. Analytics platform is a system that collects and analyzes data in order to help a business understand its customers and operations. The platform can provide insights on everything from website traffic to how often customers visit and what they purchase. So Google Analytics 4, which is a tool for analytics, and there's another one too called Momoto, I forgot how to say it, <laughs> but there's another one too, but Google Analytics 4 is a tool choice for developers looking to measure engagement and traffic on their website or apps. With its comprehensive re reference materials, it provides detailed instructions that make tracking your website performance easy so you can focus on innovating. Adding Google Analytics to WordPress is so easy. All you need to do is go to analytics.google.com, create an account, and it'll have you create a property. You'll be creating a GA4 property for the most part because they're getting rid of the old analytics, which was universal analytics. And then once you create the property, they'll give you this measurement ID here at the bottom. Now, the cool part about using WordPress plugin, the Google site, WordPress, it was called SiteKit, but the Google WordPress plugin called SiteKit, you don't even need to memorize this measurement ID. You just need to add this plugin to your website. And once, if you're logged into Google, once you add this plugin to your website, you're logged into Google, it'll automatically or auto magically connect your website to Google Analytics. And speaking specifically, Google Analytics 4. So that way, now you have Google Analytics connected to your WordPress website very easily without having to do a whole bunch of coding or knowing a whole bunch of other stuff like that. Use the plugin. The plugin is very good. And it's very simple, analytics.google.com. Or just Google Google Analytics because Google loves Google. So that's how you add Google Analytics to the website. Now, when we get a little deeper with the analytics, this is how you add it to Presto Player. So let's go back to Presto Player. And this is a pro feature. This is one of Presto Player's pro, fe pro features, but you can easily add Google Analytics to your Presto Player. So now when you get plays from your website, they now are being collected in Google Analytics. And you can see from Google Analytics' standpoint, not just from Presto Player standpoint, but from Google Analytics, how are your videos acting and integrating with your overall digital marketing strategy? When you add your Google Analytics to Presto Player, you can see how the videos are really, really from a detailed standpoint, how they're affecting your marketing strategy. So that's another thing that's really cool about Presto Player is that you can integrate it with Google Analytics and specifically Google Analytics 4, which is the new Google Analytics. And then when it comes to rank math, you can do the same thing. So remember how I said Presto Player and Rank Math work really to get really well together when getting yourself on Google through video. Well, Google and Rank Math should work well together because Rank Math is an SEO tool, right? So the same thing with Rank Math, you can just literally add Rank Math to Google, integrate it together very easily through Rank Math setting here. You go to rank math and you go to general settings, analytics, and you can easily do it here. And then you can say, hey, I want to install the code through rank math. And if you do it through rank math, you don't need site kit. Or you can say, I don't want to install the code, meaning add Google Analytics to my website through rank math, and I want to keep site kit. So don't add them twice. Just do one or the other. If you're going to do it through Google Analytics, site kit. Make sure you don't install the code here, but you still want to add the property. And it's very simple. Once you make your, your analytics property, it'll all appear right here. And you just got to just toggle it and pick it. You don't need to know no code. You don't need to know how to do analytics. You just toggle it and pick it. And then let that sucker collect data for a couple of months. That's why I'm, I'm telling you what I'm telling you right now, because if you just set this up and then you can let it collect data, 
somebody else can tell you what that data means months and months later down the road, right? But if you don't even set it up, it's hard to even see what you're doing and what you've been doing. And then if you want to learn more about it down the road, you can learn more about it, but just set it up and start collecting that data. And that is pretty much it as far as the presentation is concerned. So if anybody does have any, I know we had to have a people, a few people had to leave, but if anybody that is left has any questions, the, the, the floor is definitely open and hopefully you all have gotten something valuable out of today's session. City Walls.